we actually uh, set up um, two full OS systems and then we uh, generate Azure Lamb Week between the two and we will uh, show you how to lock one of these systems and how to operate it. I would say let's move to the, the full system. I will explain a bit what we uh, see here. So this is the cubic system which is more compact and then here we have the cylindrical uh, um, system and uh, so both identical they have the Eingetter pump controller and monitor signals, error signal and so on. It uh, can be controlled by Ethernet. Then you also have access USB to a, a camera which you can monitor which uh, TM mode the cavity is locked to. And then here we have um, the error signal and the transmission. So here's actually the TM00 mode. And you see currently the laser is, is scanned and you see the particular hole error signal. And um, then below here is our uh, Synchro unit, which is our universal um, control platform and uh, can be remotely controlled conveniently, even if you're not in a lab, uh, you can lock the system and monitor everything. Then within the system, there is an uh, MDF box, which also gets rid of um, uh, acoustics, reduces the environmental noise. Then the laser sits in here, it's a real Planex laser, which we couple to the cavity via this fiber. And then here you got all the optics to generate the PDH error signal, so you got an EUM for the diode and just uh, some polarization optics. And yeah, then in here we have um, everything to generate the PDH error signal and then also to feedback to the laser, and in that case we feedback to the current and then a slow loop to the temperature of the laser. And yeah, once you lock that, that runs for weeks and months and uh, is 24-7 uh, operation. Okay, and then the same is true for the cubic, only that it's uh, way more compact, so you see it's roughly half the size. And of course we have even more compact systems, so it depends on your application. We also offer the systems that come in 8 height unit uh, rack mountable uh, systems basically. Okay, so um, then what we set up here is basically, so here you have one output here from the cubic, one from the cylindrical, here we just have a 50-50 PM coupler and then we got a photodiode here, which is enough to generate a heteroline meat. And here we have a spectrum analyzer which looks at the signal. And so here you see we have a span of 3 gigahertz. And currently because we're ramping the laser, so this is the optical beat. And because we're ramping the laser you see this 10 hertz um, ramp on the beat. This cavity is already locked and this one here is currently being ramped. That's why here we see the PDH error signal. So this is the, the main mode and this is the sideband. And here the pattern just repeats. And you see here the transmission photodiode signal. And what we see is that you have transmission on the main mode, but of course not on the sideband. And then what we want to do is now lock this cavity to the main mode. And um, so I will demonstrate this now. So I engage the lock. It should lock. Okay, yeah. So now you can see the system is locked. I can also take it out of lock again. You see the arrow signal and I can lock it again and what you see is that the transmission increases because now you have uh, light in the cavity transmission goes up and yeah you see that here's the in-loop error signal and this is the transmission and you see here that now the system is basically engaged so this controls the current and now we can also lock the integrator so this integrator integrates the current and then feeds back to the temperature of the laser and like this the system stays locked over weeks. So here you see the optical beat and this is a CW beat. It's quite easy and so now what I want to show you next is the typical performance of these systems. So um, to make that quicker I prepared the measurements already. So I will show you now what the performance looks like. So basically, um, once you got this hydro beat, what you want to do is um, 
you can measure either the phase noise or the frequency stability. So the frequency stability we measure with an FXE counter. Um, for this you have to mix such a meat which is at a couple of hundred megahertz down with a synthesizer um, in the counter range, so somewhere below 60 megahertz say. Um, in that case we mix it down to 10 megahertz. And then uh, here we count it with um, 0.1 second um, sampling time. And here you see we have a trace of 12,000 uh, so that means it's um, uh, 1,200 seconds. And so now what you see here is basically a linear drift. And that is due to the, the shrinking of the cavity. So the cavity shrink over time. And here we have a linear shrinking. You always see the difference between the two cavities. But in that case it's uh, roughly 70 millihertz per second. But this can very easily be compensated for, measured by a frequency curve and then compensated for. So this we've done on the next slide. So here the linear drift is um, subtracted and then you see here, um, so here on this scale we have uh, frequency fluctuations in hertz and you see over like uh, 1200 seconds you have a peak-to-peak -peak fluctuation of maybe 15 Hz, so on a 200 terahertz carrier. Now, um, typically you're calculating something like an uh, annual deviation, so here it's modified annual deviation. We see here at one second we had 1.7 times n to minus 15, so uh, sub-hertz. And yeah, so this is a standard uh, performance that we spec, so at one second um, Depending on what exactly you need, we have uh, some options where you can have uh, better mirrors and you can even go uh, in the mid 10 to minus 16 range. But if you use really mirrors, then typically we spec uh, below 2 times 10 to minus 15, for example, depending on which cavity you have. And yeah, this is the sub hertz performance uh, which you can get from these systems. And of course, um, we can not only measure the, the RDEF, but we can also. Um, measure the line width of the laser. So I told you the, the cavity itself has maybe 5 kilohertz, but because the PDH lock has so much gain, you can actually stabilize the laser to subhertz. And here is the same heterodimer as before. So the way we did this measurement is we um, mixed it down to even lower, say 5 kilohertz. Then we have an, um, uh, an AD card that gets that sine wave. Then we run a fast FFT. Um, and basically this is the line width plot you get out. So here we have a line width of 0.6 Hz roughly. And yeah, this we measure for every system here at Menlo. And we have uh, in-house systems and we characterize every system in terms of stability and line width against our reference.